What's up guys, welcome back. Today's recipe is inspired by some room service that I had on a recent trip at the W Hotel. They served me this amazing banana foster French toast. I came home and decided I want to try to recreate it for you guys. But before we get into that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right, guys, meet me in the kitchen. Let's make it happen. First things first, let's take a look at these ingredients. We're going to get the party started with our custard. For that, we're going to need four eggs. We're going to give them a quick beating. Break out the whisk. Beat them like they're in charge of the heat outside. I don't know about you guys, but it's like 100 degrees all week and I'm not feeling it. But this will make me feel better. All right, so we got four beaten eggs. We're also going to add about a fourth cup of brown sugar just to sweeten up the situation a little bit. Give that a mix. Next, we're going in with some allspice, cinnamon, and some nutmeg. Also going to add in a splash of heavy cream or half and half, followed by our vanilla extract. We need about a fourth cup of heavy cream in total. We're also going to add just a pinch of salt. And that is going to be our custard for the French toast. We're going to soak our bread in this before we roll it into cornflakes because we're making a crispy French toast. All right, so when it comes to French toast, there's two types of bread that I personally think are the best for French toast. One being brioche, or today we're using challah bread. This is from a Jewish bakery in the Bronx, actually exported here to Virginia. It's a Jewish bread, so that makes sense. We're gonna cut it into slices like you see right here, about an inch or so thick. That way they can hold up to the custard and the frying process makes a mean grilled cheese too. Also can make a really good bread pudding if you got leftovers, which I doubt you will. So what we're using today is cornflakes. That's going to add the crispy element to our French toast. Just want to get in there by hand and you know crush them up. They don't have to be super fine. Not like bread crumbs, but you know just give them a once over by hand. Add a little cinnamon, and then make a great coating for your French toast. All right, so we're gonna take our bread right into the custard, give it a second or so to soak up the, the custard and all, the, all of its flavor. Knock off any excess, and then we're going right into those crushed corn flakes. Make sure that it's evenly coated on both sides. And then we'll set it aside until our oil comes up to temp. And we're gonna fry it up nicely for a nice crispy piece of French toast. All right guys, so we got a shallow amount of oil in our pan here. We're gonna shallow fry these. Once the oil hits about 350 degrees, we're gonna drop them in. Be sure not to overcrowd your fryer. And of course, always try to lay everything away from you so you don't splatter the oil and burn your forearm like I have done numerous times. About a minute or so per side, you want to be golden brown and beautiful. Those cornflakes are going to crisp up nicely. Excellent texture to go on this French toast. There we go. That's what you want to see right there. Beautiful. About another 60 seconds on this side and then we're gonna pop them on a wire rack, let them drain. You can throw them in the oven at about 275 to keep them warm while you finish up the rest. All right, my friends, let's talk bananas. You want a nice ripe, but still firm banana for this recipe. That's what we have here. We're going with three. You can cut them into whatever shape or size you want. I'm gonna slice them kind of on a bias here, about like that, just for presentation purposes, but that's exactly what I'm looking for right there on my banana. 
feel free to cut them however you want. Really no right or wrong way to do this. You do want to make sure that they are a bit firm. That way they hold up when you cook them. You don't want them to get mushy and kind of fall apart on you. But other than that, you can do this however you like. You can make it with pancakes, regular French toast, really however you want. Bananas Foster is a beautiful thing. The kids would definitely love it on like an ice cream sundae. Banana split, good little spin on that. Also, you're gonna need some walnuts, which are optional. If you have a nut allergy, obviously you can leave that out. You can also switch it with pecans, pecans, whatever you wanna say. We have some Jamaican dark rum. Use whatever rum you have, but that's what we're going with for this recipe. And also I'm gonna amplify the banana flavor a little bit more with some banana liqueur. And then we have our brown sugar and vanilla extract. All right, so first things first, you wanna get a half a stick of butter into your skillet over medium heat. To that, we're gonna add one cup of brown sugar. You don't want your heat to be too high, guys. Medium, maybe even medium low. And just kinda of let that work in. You're basically making a caramel sauce with the butter and the brown sugar. We want everything to kinda of come together. While that's happening, we're gonna add one to one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. Let's give that a good mix. Let's let that butter do its thing. Non-stick skillet's best for this. We gotta move butter and brown sugar up the rankings of things that smell the best in the kitchen. Because this smells heaven. All right, so once that's most of the way done, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my walnuts so those can candy as well. Again, guys, if you're not feeling the walnuts, you can leave them out, but I like the extra texture. And my wife is allergic, so I can kind of enjoy this without her nibbling on my plate. A little cinnamon. Pinch of salt just to wake everything up a bit. Gonna add just a touch of nutmeg as well. So once the butter's fully melted and the brown sugar's dissolved, we're gonna go ahead and add in our bananas. You wanna be careful with these, not to break them up. Don't wanna ruin your presentation. You don't want mashed bananas. Just add them a little bit at a time. Make sure they got some adequate elbow room in there. Just kind of fold them over into the sauce. Be gentle if you can. But this is why you want them to still be kind of firm, that way they don't break up on you. And then just let the heat do its thing, take its time, and caramelize those bananas a bit. Now like I said, we're gonna infuse a little bit of the banana flavor into our rum. So just a splash of that banana liqueur into our Jamaican rum. We're gonna add that in just a moment. All right guys, here comes the fun part. We're gonna go ahead and add in our liquor. And then we're gonna ignite it to cook it off. Obviously this part is optional, but it looks really cool. So here we are. It burns off pretty quick, as you can see. And you just want that to continue to cook off and reduce. And you have your banana foster sauce that we're gonna to top our crispy French toast with. You can see the bananas are nice and tender. They're caramelized beautifully. Give this another minute or two. I'll be ready to plate this up. And this is the part where I say, brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Say it with me guys, looking good. The only thing left to do is dig in here for the taste test. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right, my friends, this is the part of the job that I like the most. Man, you guys can hear how crispy that is. Make sure we get some walnuts in the mix here. Incredibly tender banana. 